This is Category 5 Technology TV, and tonight we are celebrating 500 episodes wow. of the show. Now, we're going to look back all the way to episode number one. Don't worry, we're not going to make you binge watch the entire 500 episodes, but we're going to take a quick look at some of the exciting things that have happened here on Category 5 Technology TV. But wait, we're also going to find out what it was like for these folks uh -oh. to join the team <laughs> and what were their first moments like here at Category 5 Technology TV. You want to stick around? We've got a lot coming up for you. Don't go anywhere. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Our live recordings are trusted only to solid-state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5.TV is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Cat5.tv slash IAIB. Nice. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome to the show. Tonight we are celebrating. Got my friends here. And uh, <laughs> Jeff couldn't be here tonight. Unfortunately, heart. work keeps him away from us. But can you believe Jeff has actually been with the show since episode nine. Oh my god. <laughs> episode god. nine. So impressed with that stat. Isn't that unbelievable? I love wow. it. So how did it come about? How did this crazy show that started out as a webcam in my basement grow into this after 500 weeks of broadcasting. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Jeff Weston was one of my first guests, of course, being mm. only nine episodes into the show. Wow. And uh, let's check in with that episode to see just what we were up to on episode number nine. Thanks for tuning in to Category 5 TV. I'm your host technologist, Robbie Ferguson from Barrie, Ontario. And I'm joined by a great friend tonight, Jeff Weston, who's along with us as we're going to be looking at a uh, software product that we've been developing over the past six years or so. And that software is called Shareathon Express. Jeff is uh, our beta tester, and I'm the uh, head developer for this project. You've been working with Shareathon Express now for oh, about three or four years, eh? Uh, it's been a good long while, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and how have you found the software has been for, you know, relieving the stress during Shareathon? It's been great. It's really. I like the fact that it's user friendly. Uh, everything's laid out in front of you, and when you got to put your numbers, it's all right there. Uh, you, there's no guesswork involved. You see what you have to do, you put it in, your numbers are there, and you've got something to go live on the radio with, and I absolutely love that. Great. So, what we're going to do, uh, we're just going to jump right into Shareathon Express's interface, and this is the login window that you're going to see when you first come onto the system. So. When you sign up for a Shareathon Express account, you receive your username and password. So we're just going to log in. Jeff is uh, our beta tester, so we're going to use his account. So here we are at the initial interface of Shareathon Express. It's interesting to note, you know, when Shareathon Express started, pardon me, in uh, the year 2001, it was a DOS-based 32-bit application with its own multitasking environment. Uh, back then, you know, Windows 98 was uh, at the forefront. A lot of people were still using Windows 95, uh, even DOS-based uh, programs. So our software, when it was introduced, was, was a DOS-based 32-bit application. And then as we uh, progressed, as the software progressed, uh, it's become a, what's called a Web 2.0 Ajax application. It's a spectacular application in that it will run on any platform. So if you've got Linux, Windows, Macintosh, it doesn't matter what you're running, it's going to run perfectly because it runs directly through your high-speed internet connection. There's no uh, hardware requirements per se. Uh, any printer that's connected to your computer, as long as you can print from your, your word processor, you can print from Shareathon Express, uh, and it doesn't have to be any particular platform. So it doesn't have to be Windows, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you're running, it's going to work for you. Basically the system requirements are micro, uh, Mozilla Firefox, uh, 2 is recommended. Uh, we also support Flash for the sound, audio, and things like that. And of course, uh, if you want to have support for a printer, uh, just having any, any printer whatsoever installed on your system will, uh, will be utilized by Shareathon Express. So looking at the interface here, now again, this is a Web 2.0 application, so you can see that we haven't had to install anything. This is just a base install. But the first thing that happens is, is it's prompting us with the Shareathon Express initialization wizard. 
This is where we set our basic settings for our share our time zone. So here we are in Canada, up in Ontario, we're going to select minus 5 Eastern time zone. We're going to name our radio station. If you have, obviously you'll have a radio station name. In this case, we're just going to call it uh, Demo Radio 88.5. We'll give it a dummy address. Okay, so as simple as that, we just save those settings. And now it prompts us and lets us know the Shareathon Express has been initialized. We can close this window and instantly we can start using Shareathon Express. The interface is set up much like an operating system. So you can see that uh, you've got your dock bar up at the top here, which gives you access to all of your necessary applications. We've got a refresh button down here, which allows us to refresh all of our totals and check for new incoming e pledges and things like that. And we have basically a power button that shuts us out of Shareathon Express. If you're leaving for the night and you want to uh, close that down, that's the way we do that. Uh, being so familiar with the interface, comments? I don't. Um. The first word that comes to mind is it's really easy. Uh, it's very smooth. It's very straightforward. Um, like I said earlier, there's no guesswork involved. It's it's laid out for you. Um, it's nice that it's not cluttered. Uh, you've got your menu at the top, and then when it comes to using your programs, you see exactly what you want. You don't have to worry about a bunch of other stuff. You don't have to worry about uh, uh, different pop-ups showing up here and there or saying, hey, you've got this, you got this message. It's all right there in front of you. If you want it, you got it. If you don't want it, it's not there. Uh, it makes it really simple and really uh, not very cluttered. Uh, Shareathon yeah. is <laughs> pretty crazy to say the least. Yeah. And the last thing you want is clutter to bog you down and take your focus away from your pledges. So it's nice that it's very clean. Yeah, I think one of the key elements that we've looked at as we've been developing the software over the past several years is basically this one word, intuitive. And when we talk about that, you know, we've sat down with uh, with different people that that run shareathons, and you know, ask, okay, what can we do to make your shareathon less stressful? What can we do to make Shareathon Express easier to use and faster for you, so that when you're entering pledges, you know, it's very simple, it's very straightforward. You can enter the pledges with ease of use, and you know, you don't really, you don't have to read a, a great big long manual. You pretty much can just. Uh, you know, pick it up, uh, you know, within, I don't know, how, how long does it take you to learn the system, Jeff? It's, uh, it's pretty intuitive, eh? Like, you just... It's pretty quick. It doesn't take much. Yeah. If you, if you can pretty much enter the information about a pledge, you, you've got the system down, so... Yeah. Yeah. So, looking back at Shareathon Express, um, now what we see, just because we've entered that one, one-time pre-pledge, the quick stats right here on the desktop, and what quick stats, is, uh, pardon me, quick stats are, is basically Shareathon Express's way of displaying your um, basic um, pledge information. So this will tell you, again, only what's relevant to right now. We don't see any goals or anything like that because we haven't entered them into the system yet. But we can see that we've had one pledge, and that pledge total brings us to $100. So very basic information at this point because we've only entered one pre-pledge. But what we're going to get Jeff to do uh, is what he's really good at, and he's going to emulate a share right now live on the air. So he's going to be there entering pledges as if he was somebody that uh, was take, you know, that was bringing in the pledges uh, at a real share So, Jeff, you're good with that? I'm good. All right. We're going to go over the API while Jeff works on that. So you can just log in there, Jeff, and start entering your, uh, your pledges. <clears throat> Back at share Express here, and you'll just notice, I should just make mention while Jeff is working away there, Jeff is working just on a standard notebook computer. He's plugged into the wall, but otherwise he's on wireless internet and able to uh, use the Shareathon Express system. And he can do that from anywhere in the world. So he can be connected by phone, by uh, you know any form of communications. He's able to run Shareathon from that laptop computer. So very cool. This just shows us simply you know where we stand with our one-time and monthly goals as well as how many pledges we've received one time monthly and your grand total, your pledge totals here. And you can see, now you notice there as we're talking, how that changed numbers. And this is because Jeff is currently uh, inputting pledges. So this is all real time. So if you can imagine this up in your studio and somebody uh, working the Shareathon Express system is entering pledges, uh, this is going to update the studio in real time live on the air. So that's going to give your 
your studio, uh, your your disc jockeys, and the people that, that are announcing on the air all of your share uh, totals, that's going to give them a chance to have real live stats right down to the moment. I probably could have watched that the whole hour. That was hilarious. This is Category 5 Technology TV. One of the fun things about seeing something so old. Like, here we are in episode 500. We're in mm. 1080p. Uh, we're in a studio space about almost 1,000 square feet, 960 square feet mm. of studio space. We have one, two, three <laughs> studios plus audience seating around us. And back then, we had a, a couple room. of webcams. Yeah. Um, people are laughing about the laptop computer. Man, which it's a brick. It's a giant brick. Back in the day, it <laughs> cost me $1,700. Oh, my gosh. That's quite the investment. But we see a huge difference in frames per second, for example. Yes. Right? If, like, yes. <laughs> can you imagine watching the show in two frames per minute? Like, well, right now? Well, right well, now, your mouth matches the words coming out of it. If you uh -huh. are... <laughs> Hearing impaired, mm. I, I hope that you're able to understand me tonight. There was no hope for you around episode nine. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Captions do not exist, and that is just not going to be possible. Oh, my gosh. Wowzers. That Come is back. great. That <laughs> was the, Jeff's first time. That was his first time on the show. Can you believe? Aww. He seemed really, like, calm and pretty laid back i think yeah. having come from a radio background both he and i right. we were both fairly comfortable with the whole being on the air idea yeah. doing video was quite a bit different from doing radio but um right. it was a good opportunity so mm -hmm. uh, and a, a fun time and a good way and i when i say an opportunity as an old old school radio dj mm -hmm. coming off of radio and then going into computer programming You've got like this itch. You've got to be broadcasting. You've you need that. It's part of who you are at your innermost being. And if you've ever been on the radio, you know that feeling. Uh, so that was you know a good opportunity for both of us. Now going back to episode nine, looking at this product, Sherathon Express. It was a success back in the day. It was a fantastic product, as you can see, probably ahead of its time. And I say that a little bit humbly, in that you know I did create it, but. I can be proud of it. Yes. It was a really good product at the time. Other yeah. products at, the, at that time were DOS-based. There was nothing like this on the market. Wow. So we did really, really well with it. Mm -hmm. And then it went defunct. In oh. 2009, we shut down Sherathon Express. And that mm -hmm. was largely um, due to my changes in, in my life situation. We had kids. My wife and I stopped doing music. We, and mm -hmm. that's, you know, on a kind of probably a, a fairly permanent hiatus. Yeah. And I pursued a <laughs> career. And so became a programmer. And so things changed in our lives. And so Sherathon Express became something that was no longer maintainable. It was uh, okay. becoming too old at that point, having yeah. been developed for several years. And so rather than revamp it and recode it for modern technologies, I decided, unfortunately and painfully, to oh. shut her down. And that's what it is. And tonight we're going to see a couple of other technologies that we've shown on the show. And we loved them at the time. And they unfortunately are defunct. Oh. <laughs> and I think that's part of what we see over the course of 500 episodes is that right. we do try to promote some really cool technologies that are up and coming. And then they're gone. And then some of them don't make it. <laughs> that's but that's time. good. You know what? That's, yeah. that's just a really good lesson, too, is that some of your ideas may make it, mm -hmm. and some just might remain just good ideas. I think like Sherathon Express, yeah. the folks that are involved in those projects need to be proud of what they accomplished yeah. at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't have any regrets about having shut down that in that no. I can feel good about what we accomplished during that time. Jeff and I did a great product. I spent a lot of man hours coding that thing and I yeah. learned a lot and it probably helped lead me up to becoming the coder that I am today. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now, you know, my full-time work and has been for many years is is sitting down coding and and so go. that's, you know, that was probably a big part of the start of it. Um, looking back at first episodes. Right. Sasha Dermatis. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing that I just learned today. Today? Today. So, Sasha, when was your first episode? Okay, <laughs> so here's the honest 
story and answer. She doesn't know. I don't oh, no. know. I don't know because I have a memory, a false memory. I would be a horrible eyewitness. I have a false memory that my first episode was the one that was live, like in front of a live studio audience. And we... The like, season drew... six pilot. Yeah. Wow. And we, we drew rented Nate. out a hall yeah. and we sat in front of a uh, live audience. A big live audience. Yeah, big yeah, audience. Big audience. And we had tons of people on the stage. That was what? my first Eric episode. Kid was there. Jody <laughs> Krangle was there. Jody's the lady that you hear at the top of the show saying, Oh my gosh. This is Category 5 Technology yeah. TV. It's she's so this cool. infamous radio voice. And she's, you know, a famous voiceover actress. And she contributes her time to recording those things for us. She mm -hmm. was actually there in person during that episode. Yes. Wow. And all this time we thought that was your first episode. Yeah, but in my memory, it is the first episode, but you just told yes. me before the show aired how wrong I am. In my memory, it was your first episode. And I think you, <laughs> oh, imparted, that. That. you imparted that to me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Then I how sat down, I sat down this past week preparing <laughs> these clips for tonight's episode, episode 500. And I'm so the very first thing out of your mouth on that episode was that you had been on the show only once. So you were on the stage and you said, I've only been on the show once. Oh. And it was a couple oh. weeks ago. So I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> so go back. So I went back three weeks prior to that episode. It took us to episode number 262. I am so excited to see this. Where you sat oh down gosh. in Studio C for the very first time oh. now keep in mind this is episode 262 here we are at episode 500 and sasha dermatis is still here with us our loyal news girl that's right Aww. i love y'all let's take okay. a look at i'm episode very scared of this now two. I have no <laughs> and how are you nervous yes fabulous <laughs> what do you mean three seconds robbie <laughs> What do you mean, 43 minutes, Robbie? So tell, yeah. <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh-oh. What do you do? What do I do? I work for a super awesome chiropractic clinic. I'm a chiropractic assistant, and I waitress and bartend for fun as for fun. a hobby. She works <laughs> as a hobby. It can be done. <laughs> I was a little bit offended before the show, though, because she knows nothing about these guys behind me. I'm so sorry to everyone. She's, she's like... <laughs> What is that? Don't hate me. I read. <laughs> says, what's Spock? She literally read I can the do thing. this. I can do this. She can do that. Which is, you know, that's a step in the right direction. So? Seriously, if you didn't grow up on the Enterprise, what on earth? On earth. That's the point. <laughs> I didn't grow up on the Enterprise. I grew up on earth. <laughs> no, but like, I, I can't imagine. Oh, <laughs> no Star Trek in your childhood? Uh, no. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. We need to hook up this girl. Send your DVDs. <laughs> your DVD sets. <laughs> Not if you love Sasha them. Dermatis. So they can yeah. get an inch of dust. On... Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I will love them. them. I'll watch them. You have I will to do watch my homework. Them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So how'd that go? You have watched all seasons of Star Trek The Next Generation by now. You've probably gotten through Voyager and Deep Space Nine. Uh, then you hit Enterprise <laughs> and you were like, sweet, this is amazing. I can do this. Almost there. How far did you get? No. <laughs> nowhere. I got nowhere. What? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Oh, this Wait, is no. why we do this. This is why we have done this. Okay, side note. I really like my hair back then, so I might do that again. That was pretty nice hair. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I... Also, also, there was a Star Trek movie that came out recently. Really? I watched a that. A Star Trek movie? I watched Duh. that. I watched the Star Trek movie. Oh, yeah? Wow. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> She can't remember anything about it. Oh. Um, it's one of the many, many Star Trek movies. But hey, okay, we got to work on this. We got to work on this. Here we are. It's episode 500. You still not watched it. Now, to be fair, to your credit, there have been several episodes where you have shown up to Category 5 Studio wearing full TNG garb. That is true because I love it without even knowing it. I love it already. <laughs> she just loves the culture of it. 
And for the record, I have to state, I don't remember making that promise that I would watch Oh, no. <laughs> now you do. Oh we my have gosh. the recordings. We can go back to episode 262 every week, folks, until we get this straightened out. Let's get this straightened out. Well, Sasha, th- by the way, I appreciate you being here. I know your horse tonight, Aww. and, and the, the folks at home, they understand, and they appreciate that you're Thank here. You. Sasha was away last week and decided, because this is episode 500... We're going to be here anyways, and uh, so we're mm-hmm. going to do our best not to force her to chat too much tonight. So mm-hmm. I won't make you. you talk too, too much. We can put on Netflix like an episode of Star Trek for you. You can just watch on the computer over there, too. That just might be a good a idea. <laughs> get, her, TNG's on Netflix, get her started. Just yeah. so you know. Yeah, you got to get started. Now, there are those who will say that the original series is everything Star Trek, and you have to go there. I haven't even gone there. And that is, I got the Blu-ray, I got okay. the, the remastered version, and we watched three or four episodes of it, and I just couldn't do it. And I think that's just because of my generation, where, you know, I was... It's too old. The I wish that they could redo it in such a way that it gets rid of the oldness of it. And, and so... But it was so dramatic. Able, it really was. But everything from TNG onward, we've seen every single episode. And in fact, now we're watching uh, season one of The Next Generation with my daughter, Tally, who's 11 years old, going on 12, and uh, she's loving it. Mm. So it's a really special time. So I should probably just like partner up with Tally and, and start watching the shows, okay. and we could Exchange just have notes. a conversation about it, because mm-hmm. that's the thing. Like, what happens when I start watching, and all of a sudden I get all excited, and I'm like, I'm on episode, like, 62. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Remember Coming that up. one? Oh, Tally, boy. Sasha's on the phone for you. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> darn it. Fantastic. Uh, Henry Bailey Brown, you're kind of here by accident. It, it kind of a, it's kind of a weird thing how I kind of came here. How did this happen? I mean... You're here as a co-host on the show. Mm-hmm. You've been doing a fantastic job. I think uh, I speak for everyone in saying that you're, you're very appreciated here and, well, and love what you do. But you came here to promote your company. Yeah, I was originally here for like the drone information, like showing off drones and stuff. And I guess I kind of stuck around. So I guess you guys just couldn't get You didn't get stick rid of around. Me. You came back to us. <laughs> As a Terminator. <laughs> All of a sudden, yeah. I'll be, I'll back. be back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but here we are. Um, that was way back. I mean, we're going back to episode number 408. Oh, my gosh. So you think that's almost two years ago, my That's man. crazy. It feels almost like just like yesterday. Ago. I remember yeah. this. I was on that episode. That you was were. fun. I was. You were on the news desk that night. Yeah. So uh, now this was a fantastic, informative <sighs> episode. And I think this is one of the things that excited me about having Henry as a part of our team is... The knowledge of the knowledge that you carry with you, and the uh, the ability to articulate um, things to do with technology. So I really appreciated <laughs> that during the interview. So I was very pleased when you decided to join us as a co-host. So Aww. let's take a look at episode number four oh eight, where Henry uh, is here to promote his uh, his brand, and Thanks, yet guys. really uh, so taught us right a now. lot at the same time. Tonight we've got a really exciting show planned for you. Because Marvin is here to visit. Hello, Marvin. So stick around. We're going to be talking all about drones, how the technology has changed, and how it's affecting the video production industry right after this. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Starring Sasha Dermatis. Hillary Rumble. Krista Wells. Eric Kidd. And your host, Robbie Ferguson. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm Robbie Ferguson, and tonight I'm joined by Henry Bailey Brown from uh, Air Support Aerial Photography. Nice to see you. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks a lot, guys, for having me in. It's it's super to see you guys. Can you tell us a little bit about what Marvin... Mm -hmm. Marvin? 
Meet Marvin, guys. by the way. He's a DJI yeah, fan. Introduce him to us. Let's, let's yeah, no worries. Um, once again, my name's Henry. I'm from Air Support Aerial Photography. And today, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen his name is Marvin, or she, etc. Um, what he is is that he's a drone. All right, so he's a Phantom 2 made by DJI. It's a Chinese company. But I use Marvin for aerial photography and videography um, for my business. So I do it for realtors, for construction companies. There's so many different clients that I do my work for. And it's, it's an amazing job to do. It's very fun. It's really cool. I love to talk a little bit about um, how Marvin and, and drones like him are, are revolutionizing videography. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this puts my 12-foot jib to shame. Well, a little bit yes and no. It really depends if you're doing it inside or out, right? Marvin Marvin was very nice to us inside the studio. He was in a very good mood, so he's flying very well. It's because well. we've got a nice big yeah. studio now, folks. <laughs> there Welcome you go. to Studio D. How do you like that? There you go. So, excellent job, guys. But no, it, it really is amazing what you can do with drones nowadays because we've gone to that point in the technology where, like you kind of said, if you can't reach a certain obstacle because of a boom, so if right. there's an obstacle in the way, or if you can't get low enough with a helicopter, what are you supposed to do, right? You're supposed to somehow levitate a camera. Well, that's where Marvin comes in, right? He uses his magical uh, four propellers there to keep him stabilized, GPS, everything else, wow. and we can get those shots. It's, it's incredible how technology has changed. Oh, um, it's brilliant. And what it's doing to the, the video production industry, I think about, and I've seen your footage, and we're showing some of the footage here on the show. Oh, yeah. Um, and it looks fantastic. The quality is, 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 in the course of, what, about three or four years, has gone from here to movie production quality values. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the most amazing part, is just how much has changed within one year alone, right? Like, Marvin, I hate to say it, but you're slightly outdated now. I'm sorry, buddy. So, okay, and that brings me to a point. Yeah. This can't be more than, what, about a year? Oh, not even. Like, so I, I got Marvin himself. He, yeah. I got him last May. So back in okay. uh, good old 2014. Um, so he's already one year old. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. But with that being said, there's already other products from DJI, like the Inspire 1. We have the Phantom 3. And that's only from DJI. There's so many other makers of drones, like Parrot and all those guys. So what's driving the technology? Is it the, the drones are getting better? Is it the, that the video is getting better? It's, it's a little bit of everything, right? Because we're seeing smaller and smaller cameras. Definitely, um, for those who have probably heard, the new GoPro uh, session just came out not too long ago. And it's... This is the little cube. Yeah, the little cube GoPro, version yeah. of the uh, Hero 4, the new guy. Um, Marvin's only using a Hero 3 Plus Black Edition, but still that gives 1080p up to 720. You're getting 30 frames yeah, a second on Yeah, 30 so. FPS. Uh, mm -hmm. And I can even go 4K with him with only 15 FPS, but of course that's when the new GoPro comes in, right? right. The Hero 4. So it's session. modular in that I see the GoPro there, so you could take that out yeah. and replace it if you wanted to go, say, 4K. Exactly. At a higher and frame rate. You know what? By all means, if you wanted to. And the cool thing about Marvin is that he has a gimbal, so like right here. Right. So if he wanted to, he can stay stable, even if the... Oh, wow. It's, it's very amazing technology. So it's, it's actually holding it. Yeah, it's, it's very, very cool stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we put a gimbal on him. He has a new transmitter. So under Canadian air regulations, it's going to depend... In, it really depends where you are. So in the America, you're under the FAA. The rules are different. But here in Canada, according to Transport Canada, um, under the rules, you have to be within visual contact with your drone. All right. All right. With that being said, if you're doing commercial, he can probably go over a kilometer distance. So, which is why we it would bring be a spec. Uh, yeah, he's just yeah. a little dot, right? But um, there are the rules in place. So, really? yeah, it, but it I makes see it safe. if if we can show your controller yeah, no to worries. the viewers at home. Yeah, here um, you go, guys. So. You're actually, I don't know which way the camera's facing. I think it's looking at, uh, at the back of the server there, but maybe Adam can be seen if I, if I lift you up a little bit. Yeah, no worries. So you can see a real-time view of... Yeah. But you still have to be within visual range. Yeah, because what, what we call like the FPV, so your first-person viewfinder, mm -hmm. um, yeah, because under Transport Canada law, when you're flying commercially, so you're making money off of it, etc., yeah. um, you do have to be in visual range. And you also, you also need to make sure that you aren't flying over people or cars or et cetera within 100 feet. 
of um, the drone, right? Adam's That's, about 100 feet away. Yeah, I know, but yeah. today is for educational purposes. <laughs> With that being said, it is different when you're indoors, so don't worry, okay. guys. I'm not going to be flying over the CN Tower or uh, anything right. crazy like that. But there are rules in place to make it safe for both the users as well right. as people around. So right? with the need to follow these regulations, yep. it, and it, I understand it's gotten pretty strict. Yes and no. It's growing a little bit stricter. Um, yes and no. Like, we are very lucky to be living in Canada right now, you and I. Okay. Um, because I know that for other reasons, but how oh, does that yeah. apply to drones? Oh, okay. Well, we got maple syrup and all that I know, fun right? Stuff, we had know? fudge before the show. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Très bon. <laughs> and two languages. Mm. Yeah, very nice. Uh, but yeah, no, Marvin, um, definitely no. What was the question again? Well, really, where, where, what I'm thinking is with the way that the regulations Oh, yeah, say, no, 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 for sure. Hey, you can't just pick up a drone and start flying. Yeah, I know. Um, you can if you want to do it for personal use, which oh. is great. Um, but when it comes for commercial use, you have to apply for something called an SFOC, which stands for Special Flight Operator Certificate. Right? Really? Yeah, a so lot of people I don't just, know. If I want to just film my house or a friend's house, I can yeah. do that yeah. if I have the kit. Yeah, if no I want to charge for it, I've got to have a license to fly. Exactly, and it's not even a license. You know, like I have my private pilot's license, but that's actually different. What an SFOC is, is that it's basically saying you're safe to fly, you have common sense, and you know the rules. And how to get okay. an SFOC is that you have to apply through Transport Canada, so the government, and you basically have to do a few standards, all right? So you have to take ground school now if you want a blanket one, which means you can fly anywhere, anytime within common sense. Um, okay. But before you get that guy, you have to have a few um, day SFOCs. So that only applies to one place at one time. <laughs> so you have to keep building up a repertoire with TC, Transport Canada. Yeah. And eventually you can get your blanket like I have which means you can fly pretty much anywhere in Ontario or British Columbia, wherever you are in Canada, and it makes it a heck of a lot easier so for the it, operator. Does it, do, do the legalities behind it, do they change? Are you finding that oh, well, through the course of your business? That, yeah, actually it's really funny because before I got my blanket coverage, um, they just switched the rules to the new set of rules, which are on the uh -huh. Transport Canada website. So if you're curious, you can find out there. But no, it's, I like it a lot better because it makes it a little bit more easier. Because Based on the old rules or the new? On the new rules okay. because now there's kind of two categories. There were before, but now it's kind of Marvin-sized drones um, and drones above 35 kilograms. All right, so... And what does Marvin weigh to compare? 1,000 grams. 1,000 grams. Plus uh, around 100 grams for the GoPro. 1,000 so, grams is one kilogram. Yeah, folks. for all those folks that don't go by <laughs> kilograms. Um, it's all yeah. the math I plan to do tonight. <laughs> so yeah, nice it makes life simple. a little bit easier. So you're doing this professionally. What yeah. kind of technology is required in order to actually go from the guy who just wants to fly? Yeah, around? no, no. I've no got worries. my little uh, <laughs> cheesy little, I don't, uh, you, I don't know if you can see it there. No. But, um, I've got a mosquito, no camera. Yep. What, what is it that makes me able to jump from yeah. the amateur, just want to fly a drone? To yeah, no worries getting up to this level? No, it's a very good question, and I'm really happy to ask I know it's not that. just technology, right? It's no, it's the number one, thing, skills. number one thing you're going to need, though, and I swear by it, is a coffee machine, because that caffeine you're going to need okay, like that. to stay awake. When you're doing paperwork, if you want to do it commercially. <laughs> um, with that being said, there is a lot of change you have to invest if you do want to go for a Phantom or an Inspire or something like that, because they are a lot more expensive, because a Mosquito, I'm guessing, was... Around $100. Four, 14 four, bucks. $14. That's <laughs> 10 years that, ago. So I'm very entry level. 10 years ago, that would have been like $100. That's amazing, right? I know. It's yeah. insane. One day Marvin's going to be like, you know, $100. I got Marvin for around two or three grand. Mm -hmm. And that's not including like um, the extra antenna, the gimbal, everything else. Right. And you've obviously pimped Invested. out your remote quite a bit. Yeah. And for, for those, um, yeah, no, for those uh, hobbyists out there, like I'm using the fast uh, T8 FG um, S control system if you want to know what that is and uh, a lot of other people use these for hobbies I just mm -hmm. like it because you get a lot more buttons buttons are always nice no but um, they are programmable because before before okay, the show yeah. we were talking about 
Um, what happens if he lost signal and he was flying? Yeah, right? I was thinking because you say it can fly yeah. up a kilometer, but what happens if you know there's a cell tower that causes interference? It loses connection with exactly. the remote. At that point, does it just fall to the ground and you lose your two thousand exactly three thousand dollar investment? And actually, before we even go to that, I'm going to bring up the other thing: altitude. Yeah. Um, you say like over a kilometer. Believe it or not, there is a height limitation for uh, commercial drone pilots too. And this um, is just a regulation? Yeah, it's, it's not a, it's a limitation a, it's a rule. of the machine. Yeah, not, not for the machine at all, but we, we don't want to go above 300 feet. Okay. So I just want to let everyone know 300 feet is our max, right? Just because of Why safety. Is that? Airplanes. Yeah, airplanes. Right. You know, when I'm flying around in a Cessna, I don't want to meet, meet Marvin face to face, right? right? Yeah. Um, but no, I just wanted to put that in there. There is a height restriction as well. I feel like I should get my hair cut. <laughs> like because I just grew it out now. Because like everybody no, likes I should their get hair. My hair. Everybody yeah. likes your hair from the past episodes more than they like it. Mine now. hasn't that's changed much, thing. folks. I don't know. Yeah. So are you still flying, Marvin? No, that's sad. I haven't seen Marvin. In He's Aww. in my basement somewhere, which is depressing. Because I has... live in a basement. Cool people live in basements. Marvin's okay. <laughs> well, I practically live in my basement because that's where my office is. But yeah, I have a new one named Buzz. He's a Phantom Three Pro, but it's wow. just. <sighs> Good old times. Good old times. Now, do you find that you're attached to your drones? Oh, totally. Like, there's you almost know? a sentimental attachment there. Well, that's that's like why I named them, right? Thing? Yeah, it's weird, not, eh? not even like that, because it's just like, it's something that you use every day. So it's, it's like a friend, right? It's like yeah. an old car that you drive, right? Now, yeah, but cars are cars. You get it from one car to the next car, and it drives pretty similar. Drones are very different from drone to drone. And yeah. something like a Phantom 2, where it was a very manual flight process. Yeah, and now, like, even mine is severely out of date with technology, right? But I still use it because it's all I really need right now. Sure. But at the same time, it's just, I, I totally agree with that. And, again, it's weird looking back because you can see how far things have come with both mm -hmm. the drones as well as the regulations that are coming out now. Finally! Yeah, it's changed a lot. Um, but again, it's just as you said earlier, it's amazing to see this transition from when this was made almost two, year, two years <laughs> flies by, literally, if you're in a drone. <laughs> Unintended. But that's, I, I just think that's <laughs> remarkable. So thank, thanks for having me, guys. And like, you, know what, you know what else is that you can tell from that interview, and uh, I haven't seen this in a long time, um, that I was interested in drones, but didn't really know much about them. This is two years ago. Now, yeah. <laughs> last summer, you and I got together because yeah. we started a show called The Drone Zone on Category 5 TV networks. So yeah. If you yeah. haven't seen that yet, you need to check that out. Uh, but what happened is I put out an appeal because of my interest having seen uh, or having spoken with you. I put out an appeal to drone manufacturers and said, mm -hmm. we're going to start doing some drone reviews. Let's... You know, do yeah, you have something you want to send us? Yeah. And I was inundated. Mm -hmm. I now own about 40 drones, Henry. <laughs> they, they just can't, like, I stop shipping them to I think we you. Re have reviewed about 10 of them. I There's think still we've a lot reviewed more. about 10 of them. The funny part is I that they're probably already out of drones. date. <laughs> they're probably already out of date because there's so many and they just keep sending them. There is that. I mean, but I've got, uh, like, I've got my free X. Mm -hmm. Like, this... Oh, notice how thing? handy it is. Yeah, you've, you've seen this on the set <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's a great case. Um, but this is very much like, um, I guess, like Marvin. Wait for it. Oh, uh, it's like a late, lightweight version. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. But look, it's got a 360 mount on it. So I had a 360 camera and I was flying it with a 360 camera last. That's awesome. But so, <laughs> like, the people, folks send me stuff like this and I love to review it and I love to, to play with it. Um, and you say, yeah, it's probably out of date at this point. But truth is, is a lot of the stuff that was sent in for the drone zone was toy grade. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really, it's not no, cutting not. edge and super fancy dancy and it's just <laughs> cool stuff that. You know, I can fly now, I can fly 10 years from now, and it'll still be fun. Well, no, and exactly, though, that's the point, though, is that it's, it's awesome to see that interest, and it's, it's really great to see that fostered in, in such a cool community as well. So I feel like that since you kind of got interested through me, I feel very fortunate to be able to help you out there. So. Inspired me. There thank, you go. Thank you for being inspiring. Speaking others. of drones, now you've seen some of the micro drones that we have here on the show, mm. like guys like this. Right? And if you've watched the drone zone, you've seen the CX Star. This <gasps> drone is so cool oh, because it's amazing. Like it's, it's the controller, but you flip it open like this, 
And then the, the, the quadcopter is... It's there. <laughs> right there. And so it keeps it safe, and it's really cool. So we're actually giving away stuff like this, um, and your opportunity here on episode 500 to actually um, win stuff like this. Now, we're doing a really interesting thing. We've alluded to it. Our patrons know about it. We have what's called the Category 5 Treasure Chest. Oh. And in that treasure chest is things like the CX Star from Cheerson. There yeah, are cool. a ton <laughs> of exciting toys and trinkets and usable gadgets, and there are so many exciting things that you can claim as your prize. And in order to um, participate in that draw, all you have to do is email me at contest at category5.tv. Let us know what you love about Category 5 Technology TV and when you started watching. Just give us a little bit of a backstory on what you've learned from Category 5 Technology TV. And as we look over those, um, it'll just be kind of you know interesting for us to see what viewers are thinking of the show. We love receiving your emails, but here's an opportunity that all of those are now going to go into a bit of a grab bag and oh. we're going to have a draw on an upcoming episode and there's going to be an opportunity for you to win an actual physical key for the treasure chest that's exciting so cool when you open the treasure chest you're going to have an opportunity to choose which prize you want to claim um, so it's a really interesting uh way that we're going to be doing our contests over the next season uh as we're actually approaching season 11 of category 5 technology tv so it's going to be a really fun way for you to participate and actually choose the prize that you want Mm -hmm. um, so make sure you send us an email contest at category 5tv and get your ballot cast. <coughs> now I mentioned at the top of the show that we've had some really great um, products on the show that have mm -hmm. done really well and some that have unfortunately failed. And one that really you know that I enjoyed reviewing was called Chemo for Kids. And it's a okay. Linux operating system and session okay. that you could set up on your computer. Hmm. And your kids have basically their own operating system that is Aww. a kiosk for children. It's built specifically cool. for children. So we're going to look back really quickly at episode number 224 at hmm. Chemo for Kids. Here it is. Chemo for Kids dot com. Okay. Oh, look at that. There's us. Look at that. Cool stuff. Okay, on the left-hand side, you've got a download link. You can get a torrent of Kimo 2 is the current version. It's been around for uh, quite some time. You can download that ISO. So that's one way to do it. Here's the thing. If you, if you download an ISO, you're going to be installing the operating system on your computer, and that's what is going to be installed on the computer. So if you're building a computer specifically for your kids, then I would say, yeah, give it a go. Uh, install from that ISO. You're good to go. In my case, I've already got Ubuntu installed. I'm using Zorin OS. So it's an, it's an Ubuntu-based distribution. So what I can do is I can actually bring up Synaptic Package Manager. And if you've got Ubuntu installed or any Ubuntu-based distribution, Mint or whatever, go in and do a search for Kimo and go to Kimo Session and uh, install that. Now, you see that there's uh, quite a bit of stuff that it's going to include with it because it comes with some games for the kids. It comes with the new session. It comes with uh, the desktop environment, XFCE. And uh, you may be concerned that's going to take up a lot of space, so we'll just go into Terminal. We'll use apt-get just to show you how much space that actually takes up. Not as sufficient as you would think, or significant, I should say. So there you go, 372 megabytes is all this is going to take up on your disk. Okay, so that's not, that's not over the top. So here we are in my existing Zorin OS installation, or Ubuntu installation. I'm going to bring back up Synaptic Package, pardon me, Synaptic Package Manager. Go back to my search for Chemo and install. Take about two minutes to install this. I'm going to accelerate things for you. And basically what we're doing here is we're being able to establish Kimo on our desktop so that the kids can use it, but we're not replacing our Ubuntu installation. We're not reinstalling our operating system. We're simply using a new session. Uh, Rob Gore mentioning that there is a, uh, a virtual disk image that you can use as well. That does cost $1.99 in order to get that. Here we're working with a, free, uh, a freely available version. 
I would encourage you to support them if, uh, if you find this useful, as, as any of these kinds of free things. I'm going to go into my user manager now, and I'm going to create a new user for the kids, and call this one the children. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up that user so that it automatically loads Kimo when they log in. Add a mom and dad password, okay? Tell it you don't want it to automatically log in. You need to have it request a password. We're going to log out of my current session. And now we're going to click on the children, which we just created, and change our session. This is why we needed that password to be there. Change our session to Kimo. Kimo dash session. There it is. So once we log in, we will see we are straight into the Kimo desktop and we can get started popping things on the lower menu down there. I'm going to grab Super Tux Cart. My daughter likes that. And just drag it on there until it gives you a space like that and let it go. And then we can configure it, bring up each application, set it for full screen if you like, which is what I'm going to do here. And uh, here we go, go into options. And I'm going to set that to full screen. And my screen is 16 over 9, so be mindful of your display proportions. I'm going to set that and apply. And you can see that's perfectly filled the screen, so I'm going to keep that. And then uh, I'll just exit and then reopen it just to make sure that the settings have taken place. Because we want to set this up to be as simple for our kids as possible. There we go. Perfect. So next up, we're pretty much ready to go. I'm going to delete this panel at the top. You can always re-add it. If you want to uh, just follow the steps here, I'm just right-clicking on the panel and deleting it, the top one, panel one. And uh, now it's gone. Nice and clean, nice and simple for the kids. And it's got uh, a nice little assortment. We've got G-Compri and some other tools that come pre-installed and set up. And I'm just going to add a logout button by right-clicking on my panel down there and adding that feature. There we go. So back to our login prompt. I'm going to log back in as myself, and we're going to finalize this installation. See how quick this is? Real easy. Make sure you change your session back to your GNOME or whatever you were using, because the installation is going to set everything back to XFCE. So you want to make sure you reconfi reconfigure yours. You only have to do it once. And go back into User Manager and bring up that the children user, or whatever you ended up calling it. Go to Advanced Settings and enter your password if necessary. Next up, we're going to go in here and basically untick all these boxes unless there's something that you want to give them access to. This is going to remove access to things like the internet and being able to insert CDs. And Now we're going to change our password settings and just tell it, don't prompt me for a password anymore. So now they can't change the session. They can't do anything other than just log in, do their thing. I'm going to log back out to show you. So now, if my child clicks on the children, there it is, click, goes straight in, and we're set. Good to go. One of the things that, you know, looking back at that episode and realizing, yeah, this product is defunct now, mm -hmm. but one of the things looking back and seeing the demonstration is, wow, there are still some really good lessons there in how to operate Linux and how to yeah. do some things in Linux that maybe you wouldn't know how to do right out of the box. And so there's still some really great content mm -hmm. in even the old episodes where the product we were reviewing no longer exists. Right. Now, another product um, that you really enjoyed. I really loved this. I loved the interview. I loved the product. I loved everything about it. Everything about it, folks. Mm. Poeo 3D. POEO 3D uh, was a, a, an innovative transition for 3D printing uh, mm -hmm. from a company here in Canada, just about, about 50 minutes south of us in Toronto, oh. Ontario. And POEO 3D introduced us to affordable 3D printing that was appropriate for the home. Wow. Let's take a look. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm Robbie Ferguson, and I'm joined today by... Uh, Tom and Matthew Zelenka, who are a part of uh, this company that's manufacturing this. It's called Poio. I'm going to get you to talk all about it, but this is cool. This is this is a lot smaller than I was expecting. Yeah. It's nice to have you two here. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to be here today. Can you tell us about uh, about the company and what it is that you're doing with Poio? Well, what... I guess to start out, how we started out is, is a number of uh, different families who, who just love technology. And uh, 
when we looked at the world today, we saw a changing environment where 3D printing was really a transformational technology, changing anything in terms of manufacturing or how parts are made to uh, how parts will be delivered. I mean, today, a company may, you know, make a pair of shoes and they'll make 20 different sizes and six different colors, and 80% of those will end up sitting on the shelf, mm. right? Not being purchased and being sold off. That's at, interesting. I've never, I've never yeah. thought that. So, so imagine, imagine the day, and it's probably not too far off, yeah. where you know you order a pair of shoes on Amazon or, or or wherever your favorite site, and you pick the size, the color, and it just gets printed right there and then. So there's no waste, no. right? And, uh, and 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 the product is fit exactly to you. Is this the dream? Is this? The well, it's, vision, it's the, the dream, but it's printing? it's probably not not too far. Not for home necessarily, three D printing, but but in general, right? So, there's cars being three D printed, and you know, at a recent car show, a whole car was printed in about forty hours. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and you know, there, there's all kinds of applications in healthcare, from printing, you know, heart valves that fit right. perfectly, to tooth implants, to all kinds of things. <laughs> Uh, to even even in conf confectionaries to printing chocolate bars that are you know in just the right shape right with the heart and whatever your name on it very cool so the applications are so widespread and what we wanted to do is is have our you know have our kids just really introduced to this technology which is so transformational for the future mm -hmm. and uh, and when we looked out there at, at what was available in terms of 3d printers we found either they were probably too expensive compared to what we wanted to pay or, or, or able to pay really as sure, a family yeah. with the number of kids. Well, they're tr traditionally used for commercial Co and industrial use. Exactly. Right? Yeah, traditionally, and, and that's the other thing. Traditionally, they were, the, you know, traditionally, typically, you'll see they're very industrial looking so big with lots of bolts and, and black and looks like it should fit in a factory more than in the home. Mm -hmm. So we worked with some very talented um, engineers to, to put together, like 3D print engineers, to put together what, what we thought would be a good vision for a printer that we would, we would love to have at home and have our kids be able to use, be safe enough, yeah. and fit in a home environment. And so we made, you know, essentially what is the POEO 3D. And, uh, and we loved it so much, and our family loved it so much, and the market research that we did with other kind of families, they thought, you know, it's great. So we thought, well, you know, why not, why not let other families benefit from that as well? And it's, it's truly a great, great, great thing to have at home. Like, I mean, kids, kids love to, um, you know, play with toys, obviously, but it's so much more rewarding when, when they can make their own toys as opposed to just, just buy them, right? And so you can see some of these, uh, some of these parts. Yeah. Even okay, so this, even, is actually, even, this is levitated. Yeah, so what happens is the platform comes up to the first... To, How close to, thing to, can we get here to see what's actually happening here? Yeah, wow. so, so it comes into the first layer, yeah. and it'll start printing that, and then that platform moves down a little bit for each subsequent layer until it, uh, until it kind of prints out the whole, uh, whole piece of uh, material. And you're asking about accuracy, so something like this, <clears throat> I don't know if you can zoom in on yeah, that, but it's like, little, well, it's, it's, it's like a little... It's like a little robot, yeah, a little robot toy, and it, print, it printed in like one, one go, basically. Yeah. And, and for it to be able to move after, like all the little joints have to have a little space between them, right? And so it's accurate enough to keep, you know, keep such a such a little space that it still so works. So when this came off the printer, was it in this? <coughs> That's it. You yeah. You didn't have to like, snap it together. You didn't have to. No, it it didn't Look snap that, together. Folks. You just have to spread it apart so it starts the moving. The hands move. The yeah. head moves. The head moves. Yeah. And the interesting thing on that little piece too is you, you can you can change the color. So. It was printing yellow, and then we just switched the color, and then it would and print. The head. Uh, it would, the head would print in out a different color. Swoop? In just one kept going? yeah, in one fell swoop, and it, yeah, and it articulates. Yeah, it articulates. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's, um, so it's a fairly accurate uh, machine to be able to do that. It's, I mean, it's similar accuracy to what you'd see in the industrial printers, sure, that are of the same uh, type. Okay. So the kids are not only learning. You know, to make toys, yeah. but it, it's an investment actually into their future, so they can conceptualize, you know, 3D shapes and models, and actually learn the skills that one day, as they grow up, yeah. and can have enter, you know, society as productive human beings, they'll be able to actually use those skills down the road as well. Yeah.
This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome to the show. And tonight we're celebrating episode 500. That's Woo! 500 <laughs> weeks of nice. Category 5 Technology TV. We're looking back at some of the older stuff. And it's really, really neat to see how far we've come, but also um, see some of the cool stuff that has been here on the show. We obviously can't cover even a fraction of the neat things that have been on the show. Like, I think about some of the interviews that we've had and the fun that we've had on Category 5. And, you know, tonight in a one-hour show, it's just not something we can cover. So, mm -hmm. you know, we just want to talk about, you know, our experience. Like, what was it like for you, Henry, coming into Category 5 as somebody promoting your business and then all of a sudden becoming a co-host? Like, what were wow. your <laughs> thoughts? So beforehand, you know, we're, I'm coming in to yeah. talk about air support aerial photography. What was going through your mind well no because like i i knew of your show beforehand because obviously like i knew you before and everything else um and it was exciting because i i knew that you had a community already built up you were you're so many episodes in like over 400 episodes into a show which means that you were doing something right so <laughs> i went and i i just thought i just thought you know what why not i i, I didn't know what to expect going in i was a little bit nervous because it um, it's it's hard to explain because like when I first sat down, I was just like, oh, you know what, this is actually not that bad. You know what, everyone right. everyone seems nice. You know, I I, I think I can survive. Phew. Oh, we pulled um, off that. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, but like it it was an overall it was such a positive experience. And walking away from my first time being on the show, I felt lucky to be on it. I'm not trying to suck up or anything, but it's just it was such a great experience. And we, when I was able from, to come back, we know from an episode a few no. weeks ago that you don't, you don't suck up. <laughs> no, so it's all good. He likes and, my baldness. Yeah. We're it's all good. Talk about that after we, the show. You can shine that too. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, no, but and then when you when you asked me to um, cover for Jeff the one time and. Uh, I, I couldn't say no because it was it was such a positive experience for me and it was fun and that's the most important thing is that um, again we're all volunteers here and we're here because we want to be here we don't have yeah. to be here but I think that I, I really believe in the entire idea of ed education and being able to like show how things work and I just felt so fortunate to be a part of that so thank you Robbie for yeah hey, thanks, thank you guys man. for listening for thank you for here. Sasha for and Sasha, you being here. Well, before before I talk to you now, looking back as we look back at some of the things that we've accomplished here, we have this like kind of I don't know what a scrapbook. This is the yeah, first like seven seasons book. of Category Five Technology TV, and it's just candid pictures that you've never seen before. No. That are behind the scenes, some of Rachel <laughs> Shue's drawings and and some of the fun stuff that's happened here at Category Five in the first seven seasons. Now we could bring out Volume Number Two, but this is something that is kind of you know a little bit of a collector's item as far as the studio goes because it's, it's just so it's cool. chock so full of photos wow. folks and this is something that's in the treasure bin as well if you're a real fan of category 5 tv you can pick oh. up one of those um, so make sure you email contest at category 5.tv with you know what you love about the show what you've learned here and uh, what keeps you coming back we'd love to enter your ballot absolutely sasha what's it been like for you i mean you started here um you know our story is is you worked at the chiropractic clinic exactly. that saved my my back and my arm and uh and that's how we met and right then you started co-hosting well, i said show. no a lot before i said yes <laughs> you kind of said mm, i'd like to but i'm busy sounds like a really great idea but and the, the classic excuse is oh but i'm not very good at technology Still, still I am but not. But have you realized now, having done this for yes. so long, that really, just to to be here as, and I call you kind of a little bit of my proxy in that you're really good at saying, oh, well, what does that mean? Right. And I may not think of it. Because it's already working knowledge to you. See, that's right. the, that was the problem I had with the best math teacher I had. Yeah. Like the smartest math teacher just, just expects you to know skipped it. Skipped too many steps. Yeah. And and so I would always have to ask questions. And so that's great that you know the answer and you don't actually like. You, I, I know that nobody's judging me for what I don't know. I am learning. I'm learning very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I am learning, <laughs> and I think that. The beginning obviously i don't remember my first episode because i was very nervous yeah coming um, into it it was pretty mm -hmm. nerve-wracking to know that 
you know, there. So our average views are we we tallied up about nine hundred and sixty thousand views per week. Right. Um, is what we're currently at. I'm like far less nervous now, even though yeah. I know the numbers. But the best thing was the next episode I was on, which I thought was my first, was like all of the co-hosts. Right. So then it made me think, okay. There are other people out there that can do this. I can do it. Mm-hmm. All right. And it's so much fun. I love being here. <laughs> I love being here so much that I come even when I don't have a voice. <laughs> she's here to celebrate with us, even <laughs> though she's hoarse in the throat. Well, we appreciate you very, very much. Yes. Um, looking back, uh, even before your time, um, I mentioned Mark Shuttleworth has been on the show, and mm-hmm. you know there's a lot of stuff going on with Canonical and Ubuntu right now. Yeah, uh, because Mark has stepped back in and said, "Okay, we're going to make some very, very critical changes here. We're going to drop Unity. We're going to stick with. We're going to go back to GNOME." Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are not sure. Okay, is this an exciting thing? Is this a good thing? Or is this a bad thing? Not really sure just yet. Yeah. Let's see what happens with the next release of Ubuntu. But let's go back in time to 2008 when Mark was here on the show. And uh, he spoke with us about um, the future. What he saw would be the future of Ubuntu. Let's check in with Mark. The things we strive for in Ubuntu are, are, are ease of use. You know, making it really easy for, um, for any user to get it installed, to, to have access to the the low-hanging fruit, you know, an easy, easy on-ramp to the web, easy access to, to, to web browsers, email, right. basic office applications, and so on. So um, it, we, we also stream, strive to make it robust and secure and reliable for power users, but fundamentally the, the focus is Linux for human beings, right? Right. And, and speaking of, like, just kind of the focus of how you program the software, like, you've got the server operating system, you've got the desktop operating system, and you had also put a lot of work in with Intrepid with uh, making it work on, on portable laptops and things like that, um, very small laptops like the EPC. Uh, kind of, are you keeping on with that direction of having kind of three bases for Ubuntu? Yeah, at least, at least that many. And, and what I'd also like to have wow. is, uh, is, is a sort of small... <laughs> Small handheld device version as well, because it, mm-hmm. it seems to me that 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 we're moving to a world where your data, your experience of technology, is increasingly out there in the cloud, and uh, you want to be able to access that, you know, from a device in your pocket or from a laptop or from your desktop at home, and have access to the same data used in the same way. So, if we're able to provide people with that common platform in in in, in future, that will be a that will be a wonderful thing. Thank you so much, Mark. It was. Definitely informative, and I know all the viewers certainly appreciate um, your idea of philanthropy and and how you just want to help everyone out. It's um, really appreciated. Definitely. Well, if we can bring together amazing technology, amazing sort of social processes, and an interesting new business model, I think that's uh, that's a win. So thank you very much, guys. It was nice to meet you. Mark, thank you very much for being on Category 5 TV. Take care. Stay well. Now, if you'd like to see the entire interview with Mark Shuttleworth, go back, way back, to episode number 64. I could literally watch all of the episodes like this. Like binge category binge five technology category TV. Five. Yes. Yep. <laughs> That's going to happen. This is awesome. So no matter what you think about the changes and the way that Mark has stepped in and is shaking things up at Canonical right now in 2017, looking back, as you say, almost 10 years ago, Mm-hmm. Almost 10 years ago, where this guy is revolutionizing desktop yeah. Linux uh, from the ground up and making it so that it's easy to install. Garby in the chat room says, you know, that's part of what made me able to switch to Linux was like Ubuntu made it yeah. so that I could. And, you know, here we are t- 10 years later. And, uh, you know, some of the things that he said are really close to home and, and happening right now. His, mm-hmm. his ideas of the cloud. I know. What? Amazing. Years <laughs> Just before mind anybody blown else. right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, speaking about old Linux, Linux 10 years ago, think about Category 5 Technology TV and how we got started. This started up as a way for me to be able to share with customers... Mm-hmm. how to do things on their computers without having to charge them for that tech support and that advice. So in that, as a Linux guy myself and somebody who's a, a real believer in open source technology and, mm-hmm. and a promoter of these things, our very first episode of Category 5 Technology TV surrounded, you guessed it, Linux. Our very first episode was something called 
PC Linux OS. Now, oh. earlier on the show tonight, episode 500, we were looking at some technologies that, you know, we showed them on the show and then they fizzled out or disappeared or who knows where they are now. Right. And then we've got things like Ubuntu with Mark Shuttleworth that are doing fantastically well, but going through a time of transition. And then mm. we have PC Linux OS that was there on episode number one of Category 5 Technology TV and are still here today. Let's check out how they looked back then on episode number one. This is the first time it's loaded. It's going to bring in all the drivers and things like that. It's already detected all of our hardware, unlike Windows. And I, and I don't like to say that, but Linux uh, is uh, basically everything is self-contained within the kernel, so you don't um, have to install too many drivers, if any at all. So here we are, we're right under our system. We've got our base applications, including our uh, office suite, which just gives us a ton of things, including word processor, spreadsheets, basically everything, and of course Firefox and things like that. Wow. So not only has Category 5 Technology TV obviously progressed a lot since then, and, and you were commenting that, you know, what phone number is that? I don't, I don't even know anymore. Don't call it, please. It's probably someone's home phone number. We don't want to bother them. Um, but you notice that like my email address was at RobbieF.com. Like, yeah. this, is, this is before Category 5 TV even existed as a thing because mm -hmm. it never was meant to take off like it did. Wow. And there we are. So PC Linux OS was there on episode number one of Category 5 Technology TV. And PC yes. Linux OS <clears throat> is still in existence today. Oh, my yeah. God. There it is. This is <laughs> PC Linux OS released on April 5th, 2017. Amazing. Wow. So here we go. Folks, check it out. Do a quick search for PC Linux OS. Um, and looking back at episode number one, check it out and then see how far it's come. I mean, this is the KDE version. But as you can see, Linux is what it was back then where, you know, you can install this on your Windows computer, wipe out Windows and switch to Linux. And all of a sudden, you've got an operating system that's not as susceptible to things like malware. Right. Viruses. It works out of the box. And it's super, super easy to use. And, you know, folks are, you know, a little afraid. And this is the thing. Back on episode number one, we, we sort of had that feeling back then in 2007 that folks are afraid of change to something like Linux because we just don't know, is it, is it as good? It comes with, it still comes with a free Office suite that's compatible with Microsoft Office. It had that back in episode number one. It has it here on episode number 500. PC Linux OS is a screaming fast, beautiful little uh, distribution. And I'm just running it in a virtual machine here. And even as it is, it, it runs just fine and, uh, and looks great. Well, you saw how fast LibreOffice Calc just came up. So that's basically you know, your equivalent to Excel. These things all come kind of built in. And that, my dear friends, is PC Linux OS, which is still with us today. Very wow. cool. <laughs> How cool is that? This is Category 5 Technology TV, and our website is category5.tv. And uh, it's been a lot of fun the past 500 weeks. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> Can like I nothing. take a break? 500 more. <laughs> you guys had a, a fun time a few weeks ago where you took over the show and I just had a little bit, bit of a break. <laughs> and it was a taste for me of what it could be as, as you, you all are rising up as hosts of the show and becoming able to take over in such a way that I'm not leaving or anything like that. But no. I would like yeah. to take a real vacation <laughs> once nice. in a while. And because this is a volunteer position and doing it 500 weeks every single week... <laughs> It'd be kind of nice to take two weeks off sometime. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Maybe. And we, so, can, we got you covered. I mean, yeah. not me. Not, <laughs> not today. Not, not today. Not today. Not, 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 not right now. Not to do right. that to you today. But, uh, We've got this. You know, I speak for everyone who has ever been involved with Category 5 TV uh, and is now. And you saw Carrie Webb was on the clip with uh, Mark Shuttleworth. Carrie Webb now hosts her own show on the Category 5 TV network. It's called New Every Day. Wow. Season 2 just finished last Friday. And Ooh. Seasons 1 and 2 are available on BitTorrent. You can get them at Torrent dot category5.tv 
Uh, I think that's the right URL. I better check. <laughs> I, I, if it's not torrents, things. it's torrents. I can't remember if it's plural or not off the top of my head, <laughs> but the torrents are there. Um, and, uh, and, you know, our network continues to grow. We're working on more drone zone features. I've got about 30 more drones to review. Oh, my gosh. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with that this summer. So Maybe we'll get back in to try a buy it sometime. Do you think there so? You <laughs> wow. That'd be amazing. We had, the, we had one the, episode. The pilot wow. episode. Yeah. And it was fun. And it, it was, was amazing. Oh, well. I it was had a boatload of work. Blast, but it was like really high maintenance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of work. If you haven't seen Try It By It, make sure you check that out as well. <laughs> it's there. But we put Sasha in the fanciest virtual set that we could possibly build. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it was fantastic. It but was great. The post production was brutal. It was oh, so much work. That bad. So, eh? Yeah, I think we're going to just put her up against a white wall instead for the next one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, knows? that works. <laughs> <laughs> Try this paint on this wall, Sasha. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the past 500 episodes of Category 5 Technology TV. Don't forget, we've got these great prizes to give away, and those are available to you by simply emailing contest at category5.tv. And again, you just need to tell us some of the things that you love about Category 5, what you've learned, what you love about it, what keeps you coming back, and uh, then we're going to enter your ballot in the draw. So... Very It'll cool. be a lot of fun. We've got another 500 episodes to come. Woohoo! At least. <laughs> That's right. We're coming up on our season opener for season 11, which is our 10 year anniversary. That's coming wow. up in October. Wow. And, uh, and we're going to just keep on doing what we do. So thank you to those of you who support what we do and have over the years. Um, some of you have come and gone. Some of you are here to stay. And we appreciate your support so very much, whether it be through shopping online, through our partners. You know what just occurred to me? Mm -hmm. This is somebody's first episode. What? <laughs> just right? mind blown. Yeah. We've been doing this for 500, folks. You got some binging to do. <laughs> <laughs> who needs Netflix anyway? This is Category 5. <laughs> category 5. There you go. Um, but thank you for those of you who are patrons as well. It really helps us to know yes. that X number of dollars are coming in each and every month. That yeah. really, really helps us. We've got rent to pay. We've got to keep these lights on. We've got to keep the computers <laughs> furnished uh, and, uh, and running. And, uh, and we really, really appreciate it all that you do to help us to be able to do this right. so that we can bring Category 5 to you for 500 consecutive weeks. Exactly. Thanks, everybody, and thanks, you too. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll see Thank you on you. episode number 501. Woo! Don't miss it. <laughs> see ya. <laughs>